Hello, uh, Stephen Bulger from Stephen Bulger Gallery. As we said before, we wanted to make some videos to help uh, explain a bit of photography and maybe answer some of your questions in advance of you visiting the gallery. Uh, with this video, I'm going to try to do about 50 years of photo technology in about five minutes. So I'm going to gloss over details. Uh, for good information on a lot of the processes we're going to talk about, there's books like this that the Getty put out that is a nice overview of this information. Or you could go a bit more in depth with an encyclopedia about uh, photography. So the first thing that we'll talk about is a daguerreotype invented in 1839. It's a very detailed image on metal. So there's a copper plate with a um, silver on top that's been sensitized to light. When you expose this, you form what's called a latent image. So similar to your silverware being left out and tarnished. Um, photography is made by a very scientific controlling of tarnishing. The drawbacks of this is that it was a single item, so to make a copy of this you would have to make a photograph of this to get another photograph of it or another copy of it. At around the same time that this was invented mostly by Jacques-Louis Mondaguerre, uh, uh, Britishman uh, William Henry Fox Talbot invented the positive and negative system using silver salts and paper to create a paper negative which could be put in contact with a similarly sensitized piece of paper uh, and putting them together and exposing one to the other those two negatives would create a positive and then you could make as many positives as you wanted until you damaged the negative. Um, Moving forward, uh, they wanted to reduce the expense of it, and it was the time of invention. So one of the great inventions that followed was the ambrotype. So as you can see, this is an image on glass. The way that you would make it is that you would set your camera up, figure out how you wanted to photograph, you would whip into your dark room, and you would pour your emulsion onto a plate and then move it around so it would even out and then you would let it dry a little bit just so it was a little what they call like tacky wet. You would load that into a film holder that kept the light out. You would load that into the back of your big camera and we're talking about those things that you would see that they would go under a dark cloth and you know there'd be a bellows and they would take the photograph, then they would have to immediately go back into the darkroom to process. Now, what this was, because it didn't look like much, but if you put this underexposed negative in front of something dark, it appears to be a positive. And so ambrotypes became very popular because they were much less money to make than a daguerreotype. The problem is that glass is fragile and so as you'll see from this you know smaller uh, ambrotype from the American Civil War it's been cracked. Around that time because of that type of cracking they started to make tin types. So it's a similar process except they would pour the emulsion onto this uh, tin plate that was dark so it created the impression of uh, a positive. However again this could not be enlarged. This is the only thing that you could get. With these glass negatives, as they started to make improvements with that, they also started to figure out how to make positive prints from glass negatives. These are albumin prints. So you have light sensitive silver parts, similar to what is in the emulsion to create the image in the negative. However, that is in an emulsion that also contains egg whites. And so that was spread onto thin sheets of paper to create your photographic paper. Again, this was the only size you could make because they hadn't started enlarging the negatives at that time. If you wanted something larger, you needed a larger camera that could hold larger plates. And that's why a lot of these are so rare. Um, a lot of early photography, you'll notice, are of portraits because with all of this apparatus and chemicals that you needed, much easier to do in your studio than to take it out, in this case, uh, in India. Um, so this was made with an 8 by 10 inch camera, uh, glass negative, and then made as an albumin print that's been mounted onto a board. And this used to be contained in an album. 
And early photographic albums were really the precursor to illustrated encyclopedias that we know and love today, or we did before Wikipedia. If you wanted something even larger, this is an imperial size negative, which gives you a lot more detail um, and creates just a much more impressive picture and was used a lot with architectural renderings, especially when it was a building of note. And if you really wanted the Supremo version, uh, this is a mammoth plate negative. And so you could imagine if you were taking mammoth plate negatives, like someone like Carlton Watkins did out in the Western United States after the Louisiana Purchase, where these things were carried by donkey, you could imagine the mistakes that could happen and the mishaps 